Let's talk about your NBA career, man. You had, you were known as a defensive player. You had to guard some of the toughest players in the league during your time. If you had to give me your top three dudes who were the hardest to lock up, who would it be? Ah, uh, I wish I could say him, but not, um, <laughs> not. <laughs> Because you locked me well, up. You no, had no well, problem with Gil? No, 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 no. Basically, I had, no one, I had one encounter with Gil. Hubie Brown threw me on him. Gil's super hot. I go in there, and I guess Gil was came to Memphis, really was not really interested. Hold Gil to his career low. But what he does is, I, he sees me turning up, and then like, I, right, I'm going to have 60 on y'all next time. So now I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Uh, and Hubie runs a zone on him the next game because Gil <laughs> took it personal. But I just happened to be extra motivated because I wasn't playing, and Gil really was probably looking at me like crazy. So, and Gil really didn't like that much contact. So a physical person like me is probably going to be the one that he don't want to deal with, but there wasn't that many guys that really wanted to be physical and probably was athletic. So Gil could do whatever he wanted to. But I really, I had more... I, I had more to, to gain from that game than Gil did. Like, uh, and, 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 man, he was one of the defenders, like, because you got to remember, if you look at comments on everyone, everyone hated him as a defender. That's fine. That's, yes, they're supposed to. That's, you're doing your job. He right. didn't do team defense stuff, right? So you know how, like, like yeah. I know, like, he if knows I'm the ball. And stuff, what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. No, I'm not. No, <laughs> like, yeah. because it's my job for you not to get the ball. So, like, shut down corner, yeah, I'm going to be a shut down corner and you not getting the ball. If I'm strong enough that if you get the ball up, you're not getting it back. Yeah, see, yeah. And Gil's like, <laughs> no, you're not strong enough, Gil. Weight room, you're not weight room strong yet. Like, you just, you don't care about the weight room at all. And then he get frustrated and then he loses his mind because his teammate out. Cool. But my top five, probably the hardest to guard, were. Um, not in any order, Vince Carter. Okay. Um, because Vince, probably the most talented basketball player I've ever played in my entire life. He can do everything any of your favorite scorers could do, was the most athletic person you probably ever see in your entire life. But he was just such a great person. So if Vince is having a bad day, you're in trouble. trouble. But he's usually having a great day, and he's ready to laugh and uh -huh. be cordial with you. So. My defense for that, tell some jokes. Tell some jokes. So like, but he, he was shooting at the hash mark when he, when he get hot. Like he could really shoot the ball. He could get downhill. He's long. Like he could do whatever he wanted to. So now like, I just got to keep you in a jovial like manner to, like, to stop you because he's such a great person. But he was the, the hardest once he was like locked in. Once you make him the, mad. Yeah, he's mad. You really ain't doing nothing with him. Um, Bron. Same way, Bron controls a whole game. Like that's strong, fast, Bron. I remember I hit Bron on the break one time, and I and I am not a weak individual, but I put everything I had to, and I bounced off him like a little kid. Like, so so they say like you're dirty. Nah, some of these people are really really strong, and you have to like take them out because you get a, a line between getting and one and taking them out. Like, and you get in trouble if if they score. So like you're just trying to stop the play, and you may be too strong. But like Bron, once he locks in and is coming downhill, he used to be hell off the ball with his like backdoor cuts and things of that nature. Like when he when he wants to lock in, you you're at his mercy. Um, then after that, Cole, but the triangle made it so tough to push in places. So like one on one, they put you on islands. He gets every foul call. Um, but he's super gifted too, like not taking anything away from him, but he gets all the calls, he's gifted, he was gonna complain and, and try and get every last, he get out the ref, he got full control over every ref available. <laughs> um, but then they keep you on an island so you can't really push him to his weaknesses if he played the game with his, so cerebrally that like, I, I could stay in front of him on the perimeter. So he turned his back to me. My post defense was like where I was, I would struggle a little bit with him. So he may either go all post or he knew my he knew my um my, my schedule of minutes blocks. So some coaches do you by minutes. So he knew after the first eight, eight minutes, all right, you coming out. <laughs> come on, JR. Come on, Anthony Carter. Come get some of this. Like, mm -hmm. I'll just I'll just pass for this time. I ain't gonna wrestle with you. Uh you you, you coming out any minute. Yeah. You yeah, okay, sub, cool. Now I'm going to work. But and then he had no conscience too. So he could miss 10 straight shots. And most people are like, ah, get a little shaky, not shoot anymore. I remember. When he did get hurt the game in Atlanta, he started the game off like 0 for 10. 
in the first quarter and made his first bucket one for 11 in the first quarter. He was not rattled whatsoever. He finished with like 31 or something, I remember. He finished with 31. I remember going out in the second quarter. Um, uh, Kyle Corver came in. Some other people came in. And, like, he was he was under control a little bit. The third quarter where he went on a tear, he did made, like, eight straight shots or something like that. So then now, all right, get him, Tay. Okay, cool. I did my job early, but now I, I can't play. Okay, now I got him. He makes a shot. Then you, you, you may... Get him to take some shots he don't want to take. He misses three, misses four. Next thing you know, you in a full ISO situation for game. You're like, oh man, like this is what you wanted your whole life. And at that point in time, I had never been gamed before. So it was like, it was a lot going on, a lot riding on this situation. Like I've had a lot of ISOs, three, two, one type situations. You gotta, and I had never, nobody had ever scored on me. So like I probably was, well, once again, more locked in than he he cared at that point in time. He got two chains on the side, yelling, <laughs> like, and he go for the fadeaway. I'm just trying to get as close so he can't see it. Like, that's, that's all I wanted to do because what he didn't know at that point in time is like, I've always been a super fan of Kobe. Like, Kobe's a year ahead of me. Like, all the stuff you hear about he was doing at ABCD. Like, all this, all the rumors you hear about Kobe, I'm, I'm from, I'm from Jersey, Philly right there. Like, you hear all of this, you trying everything he does. Like, been a fan in college, idolized him and Ray Allen and, and Jordan. So if I was trying to hurt that man, like, that, that's the last kind of person I would really try to hurt. Like, I'd be more excited to play in a situation like that. But he ends up getting hurt, and it's like, it, it, it went somewhere and didn't have to go. But he was, like, one of, like, he, he's not number one, because I still say Vince, Vince gave me more promise, but he'd probably be two, two, him and Bron, two, three. Um, who else? I don't, I used to get on Paul Pierce's nerves. He used to be so, he used to be so mad. Like, Paul, like me and Paul be ready to fight. I got to tech in street clothes because Paul would be so mad at me from a game before. And like, <laughs> I just run my mouth and like Paul, Paul, be, Paul be mad at me. <laughs> Everybody most of the time. wants to fight you. But yeah, because I'm not going nowhere and I'm, I'm very physical. So like, you got to deal with it or not. Steven Jackson, I can, mm -hmm. I, Jack, who was you being on terror by that time? You just make him laugh. Mm -hmm. And Jack could get out of there. I remember Steve Nash, um, I always thought I could rip him. You can't never. Like, you, it, it seemed like he out there just, if you could get it, you can't get it. <laughs> you can't get it. You're pressuring, no. Did you have to guard the yacht? <sighs> not really. But I remember guarding him one time, like, oh, yeah, he's fast as, as they say he is. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's real. Oh, hey. Yeah, it's, it's real, okay. Way.